The next letter we're going to look at uh, in vitamin is A, which stands for autoimmune, and I've also included inflammatory conditions here. So within this category includes some systemic diseases of which lung is a part of, and um, these will be systemic autoimmune conditions such as SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, and systemic sclerosis. So the pattern of lung disease here is often interstitial in nature. So again here we're looking at the functional abnormality, and this often re results in a restrictive pattern. Also in this category, I want to talk to you about asthma. And um, <clears throat> asthma is a condition that is characterized by um, reversible bronchoconstriction. So this is more of an obstructive pattern and there is a combination of bronchospasm, usually at the level of the bronchiole, together with both chronic inflammation as well as excessive mucus production. So this is an obstructive, one of the obstructive chronic uh, conditions of the lung and you can read up about what triggers asthma or the pathogenesis. Um, also included here will be vasculitis. Uh, of course, if you want, you can also include it under vascular diseases. This often has an inflammatory component and examples will be Churk-Strauss disease as well as Wegener's granulomatosis. These are conditions in which uh, there is inflammation that causes injury and damage to the blood vessels. And uh, in these conditions, uh, there is also involvement of other organ systems, and you can read about these uh, in the textbooks. Now, moving on to the next letter, which is M. This stands for mechanical or trauma-related uh, conditions, and uh, atelectasis is one example here. This essentially just means collapse of the lung. So in this instance, the alveolar spaces will be closed rather than open and filled with air. So gas exchange can occur. Uh, the etiology is obstructive in nature, which, uh, in which case obstruction can be external, for example, a tumour pressing against the airways. The, the, it could be internal obstruction of the airways, for example, with mucus plugging. There could actually be compression of the lung itself uh, from externally, for example, with air accumulation in a pneumothorax. And there can also be certain instances where the alveoli are not able to expand. For example, um, if there is decrease of uh, surfactant production or surfactant deficiency, and this can sometimes be seen in neonates, and also if there is scarring of the lung parenchyma. The next I in vitamin, uh, this stands for idiopathic and uh, there are some conditions for which we do not know the pathogenesis or the cause and one example is a chronic interstitial lung disease known as idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So this again has a restrictive pattern of abnormal lung function uh, being an interstitial lung disease. And of course the N in vitamin stands for neoplastic. Now this is a very huge category of diseases and um, benign diseases in the benign neoplasms in the lung are relatively uncommon and you can read about this in your textbooks so again we are using the very very simple and classical classification of neoplasms by dividing them into benign versus malignant now of course for malignant tumors we have secondary malignancies and the lung is a catchment organ for secondary tumors for example from the stomach from the breast or from the GI tract so uh, metastasis to the lung these are often multiple and may be bilateral so the imaging would help now for primary malignancies uh, the best and first subdivision that we must do is divide them into small cell lung carcinoma versus non-small cell lung carcinoma. So these have got uh, slightly different clinical presentations. They differ in terms of epidemiology, male versus female, age of patient, uh, different risk factors such as smoking, related or unrelated. It, even the location in the lung is often different. For example, small cell likes to occur in the hilar or the central region. And of course, the morphological features are different. Uh, for example, squamous cell carcinoma tends to be more cavitating. Clinical behavior can also be different as well as the prognosis and the management. 
So here we have a histology picture, uh, the ultimate classification of course between small cell and non-small cell is on histology or biopsy. So this is an example taken from Robbins of a small cell carcinoma where you can see that this, there's a very blue appearance and the reason why it's so blue is because the cells are mostly composed of nuclei with hardly any cytoplasm. So high NC ratios, the nuclei tend to press against each other, we call this nuclear molding. Also, there are areas of necrosis, which means that it's usually a high uh, growth rate and also plenty of mitotic figures. So this is a classical example of small cell carcinoma. Note that the nuclear chromatin is actually fairly fine and we do not have prominent nucleoli, which is often a feature that we teach about in malignancy. So prominent nucleoli are not a feature of small cell carcinoma. Here is a picture, again taken from Robbins, of two types of carcinoma. These are both non-small cell carcinomas. On the left, you can see that this tumour is clearly forming glands or glandular structures with lumina in the centre. This is an example of an adenocarcinoma. So very often in pathology, we actually use some special markers or special stains to confirm that this is an adenocarcinoma and TTF1. Uh, this is an immunohistochemical marker that tells us indeed that this is an adenocarcinoma arising in the lung. Now on the right side, we have a squamous cell carcinoma. What we are seeing instead of gland formations are these very irregular islands or sheets of cells with this kind of orangeophilic pattern and a suggestion of whorls where the nuclei sort of go round and round. So these are keratin pearl formations. You can see here keratin pearls. These are irregular islands of malignant cells. There is a very disturbed or desmoplastic reactive stroma in the background. No gland formation. So this is an example of a squamous cell carcinoma. So the commonest non-small cell carcinomas would include adenocarcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. Of course, there are other types as well. So the last category would be the one that starts with C. So this is congenital or developmental conditions of which bronchial atresia is one of them and this may be associated with uh, tracheoesophageal fistula. So this is quite a serious condition where you can have food entering the airways. Now cystic fibrosis is a genetic disorder that is characterized by excessive thick mucus production. And if you remember, this can uh, likely block up the airways and give rise to bronchiectasis, which is something that we talked about earlier on. So you can read up more about the genetic basis of cystic fibrosis. Now another congenital condition would be immortal cilia syndrome. <laughs> Excuse the handwriting here. This is also known as Cartagena disease. And um, in this instance, because the cilia in the respiratory epithelial cells are non-functioning, also we are unable to clear the mucus secretions within the airways. And this again gives rise to obstruction and bronchiectasis with airway dilatation and infection. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is a condition uh, that predisposes to emphysema because of the imbalance between proteinases as well as their inhibitors. So alpha-1 antitrypsin is actually a proteinase inhibitor and you can read more about the uh, pathogenesis of alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency related emphysema in Robbins. And this essentially is one of the obstructive, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. Remember, another cause also would be smoking, as we talked about here, under the category of uh, toxins. There we go. So just a quick roundup, we've looked at initially lung function as well as types of respiratory failure and we looked at the main categories of lung diseases here. Along the way, we have talked about the components of the lungs that are involved as well as the functional abnormality, the pattern of functional abnormality, obstructive versus restrictive. And we have used an example of this mnemonic vitamin C in order to look at the main categories of lung disease. And of course, this is not sufficient for you to study alone with. You need to supplement this with the actually reading up on individual conditions uh, from your textbooks as well as your lecture notes.